My dog wants more Tritos. Today we are meeting with a pet psychic. I start by closing my eyes and kind of feeling into my own body. Kimbop is the uh, chaos agent. Kimberly, come back here. He's just a like, Kimbop, get back here. Room. Kim, Kimberly, is he in the trash can? Kimberly. What's his general vibe with his two, his brother and sister? He resents them. <sighs> What did I just say? You don't know, but someone out there does. And today, we're meeting that person. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by Purina, and today we are going to be talking to a pet communicator. Your pet is your best friend, your buddy, your companion. You have kind of this unspoken language together. What if you could speak to your pet? Okay, stay, 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 stay. Stay, let me get your sister. It's a fam, no, come back here, okay. Kimberly, sit. Pesto, sit. Well, I have three children. The eldest is Emma. She is elderly and blind. This is Pesto, he's the middle child. He's a perfect angel. And him in the green, that's Kimbop. So we can call him things like Kimberly, people are dying, Kim. And then Kimberly, come back here. Kimbop goes bonkers for begging strips, so I'm gonna give him extra today, even though he doesn't deserve it. <laughs> These mouthwatering treats are made with one very special thing, and that is real bacon. And who doesn't love real bacon? Kimbop is both the best and the worst dog I've ever had. <laughs> My cat, Alfred, communicates very effectively to me, specifically if it's about wanting food. He always wants food. My cats love the Fancy Feast Puree Naturals. I love that you can squeeze them right into their mouth from your hand like a little tube. You can just squeeze it onto a dish or you can feed it out of a spoon or you can pour it atop their food and I assume it's delicious because they go crazy for it. I haven't tasted it myself. Bowie is my dog, he's my best friend, he is my boyfriend, my wife is our roommate. If I ever need to distract Bowie, just give him a busy bone. <laughs> it's rawhide free and it's easily digestible, which is good because Bowie got a sensitive tummy from his father. Bowie loves learning new tricks and Prime Bits are only two calories, so they're great treats for training. You can just give him as many as you need, really reward him when he's learning new tricks. I love this f***er so much. Hey buddy, how you doing? No, 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 you stay there. I didn't mean to, I'd see, I, I talked to him, now he's excited. Okay, bye. <laughs> I'm Ellie Lax. I'm the founder of the Gentle Barn Foundation, and I'm an animal communicator. Ellie, you may remember from our cow hugging, cow therapy, meeting cows video we did at a place called the Gentle Barn in LA, which is a animal rescue farm. What is an animal communicator? Okay, so let me first start by saying every living being on this planet is intuitive. I'm sure you've seen those videos of schools of fish where they're kind of moving in the same direction. And there's not a leader and everyone's following. They're literally moving at the same time. It's because they're intuitively connected. The only species on this planet that seems to have difficulty with our natural intuition is humans. <laughs> Dang it. Man. Dang it. And have you ever had the experience where you're heading down either a walking path or a driving path and then just something tells you not to go down that? Yes. Mm -hmm. or, or you're talking to someone and they're smiling and saying all the right things, but the hairs on the back of your neck are standing up because your body is believing something different than their words. The Has that happened to mm -hmm. you? Mm -hmm. The ick. The ick. There's not something the ick. about them. That's intuition. So animal communication is just simply intuition. Well, Emma uh, was an ex-roommate I had. He had adopted her from a shelter. When Matt and I got together, we got Pesto together to be Emma's brother. And Pesto is a little angel baby sent from heaven. When he's a good boy, he loves dental life treats because they're delicious and they clean his little teeth. With dental life, it's scientifically proven that it can reduce tartar buildup by 57% on average. He's just the most well-behaved little puppy you could ever meet. That's why the psychic doesn't need to talk to him because he's just, he's just a Kimbop, get back here. Now, Kimbop, we got right before the pandemic. I got him with Becky. Uh, on a whim, Matt was unavailable. So this is what I saw in the shelter, except he was sedate. What we didn't know was because, it was because he had a kennel cough. So I thought, and Matt saw from the video, he was like, wow, that dog looks really calm and very just sluggish. And then two weeks later after he, uh, he was healed of kennel cough, he turned into a literal monster. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Bowie came into my life six years ago. I was away filming a Try Guys video, actually. We were dog sledding in Alaska. I swore to myself, I never want to be around dogs again. 
And then we got back into service and Maggie called me and said, hey, I got a dog. We didn't live together at the time. She thought it wouldn't affect my life that much. <laughs> she was wrong. Growing up, I was a cat person. I liked the cats were chill, they were easy, they were low maintenance, so Bowie was a big adjustment. But now, like, this is my best friend. He's my buddy. I cannot imagine life without him. So Alfred came into our life during the pandemic. He was a pandemic cat. We went to a cat rescue that was about 30 miles east of here, and we met a lot of cats. And Alfred just, you know, emerged as this cat that seemed to be the one we would want. He kind of looked scary on all his online pictures. <laughs> he did not look like a friendly cat, but when we met him, he immediately allowed me to pick him up. He was very into being pet. He was very affectionate. And I, we just fell in love with him immediately. Alfred brings out his playful side when he's having these treats. Frisky's Playfuls are a great little treat that are designed to be for play. They're a fun little shape that helps them move in unpredictable ways, which makes them more fun to play with while eating. So you can toss them, you can roll them. Alfred and I have a very beautiful bond where I come home and Alfred will greet me, kind of like a talk. Yeah, and he, he likes Becky too. <laughs> but he loves me. <laughs> my first memory with animal communication was at six years old when I was playing in my room with my dolls. And all of a sudden somebody, you know, I heard this voice in my head saying, help. So I put down my dolls and I walked out of the house and there was this huge tree and there was a bird that had fallen out of her nest. And I'm like, thank you for calling me, here I am. And I picked her up and I brought her home and I fed her until she could fly away. And I thought everyone did that. I was like, doesn't everyone do that? <laughs> Out of all of my dogs, we're giving a reading to Kimbop because he is the one who needs a talking to. We try to give him a talking to just as regular folk, but he needs a talking to from a spiritual plane, from a psychic plane, from any other plane, because on this mortal plane, he is not learning his lessons. Yeah, I would like to know why he is trying to get on the table because it was just behavior he didn't used to do. So why he's doing this sort of slightly rebellious behavior. Bowie's an Australian Shepherd. That is an active breed. And so I guess I'm always a little anxious of like, I hope that I'm doing enough to fulfill him. I love forcing Bowie to snuggle me and give me little puppo kisses, but I do like grabbing his snoot and going mwah. If, if Bowie says that he doesn't like cuddles and snuggles, I, I think I will be devastated. When I'm doing animal communication, I start by closing my eyes and kind of feeling into my own body to see if I have any aches and pains because when I'm talking to the animal, I want to make sure what's theirs versus what's mine. And then with a picture of the animal, you ask them a question and you wait in the stillness for the answer. The pet psychic requested a photo to be able to read from a photograph. So this is the photo that I supplied. He's cute, he's inquisitive. He's being offered a little begging treat. His paw is up saying, huh? So this is actually a photo of him sitting and waiting for food. And this is just in the middle of the living room. This is what he does. Kim, Kimberly, get out of there. Is he in the trash can? Kimberly. We're going to have our reading come off of this picture. I have this beautiful picture of Alfred. This is how Alfred looks at me. Can you see? The love, the admiration, the attention, those beautiful whiskers, his tiny little open mouth. The process is, I always start the animal communication asking the animal what their favorite things are, because I'm trying to get to know them, get a feel for who they are, what their life feels like. I'm gonna write down all the things that they say. I'm gonna relay the information to you, and then afterwards, if you have specific questions, I can go back in and ask them. Hey, Ellie. Hi. Okay. So you have been here alone, you've, you've communicated with Bowie. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How did it go? Okay. When I introduced myself and asked his permission to speak with him, he kind of like came and smelled me a lot. <laughs> he smelled a lot. He used his nose a lot. And he was very sweet and friendly and curious and open. He really likes to be out in the world. You know, uh -huh. I talk to animals, some are homebodies, just like people. He's very social. He's Kind of like an extrovert, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why he thought it was significant, but he says that he bounces when he walks. <laughs> it's like good. he's got like a little bounce going. Good to know. He came across very friendly um, mm -hmm. and full of personality. He's a little bit of a diva. He's like a diva baby. Mm -hmm. His favorite thing in the whole wide world is being fussed over. He wants lots of attention. He's kind of insecure inside. He needs a lot of praise and a lot of reassurance. <sighs> just like his father. When I asked permission to speak to him, he had like this little meow, not a regular meow, but kind of like, a, 
was very kind of hangout chill guy. Yeah. Yeah, sounds yeah. like him. And even that little Mew, we call it his baby meow. Oh. That's when he does this little tiny baby meow. It yeah. sounds like a kitten mew. You said that his favorite thing is peace, quiet, and safety. Do you have a home office? Yeah. He says that he likes to be with you when you're working in the home office. Mm -hmm. He loves it when the house is quiet and peaceful and he can sleep and kind of be lazy and chill. Is there a dialogue that's happening or is it a feeling and then you're interpreting that feeling? They come through in videos and pictures and words. Huh. So they'll show me a scene or I can hear their voice and just write down their sentences. Just the other day I was talking to a dog and I, when I asked him what was his favorite treat, he showed me the bag and he showed me what the bag sounded like in my ears when the people are opening the bag and he gets all excited. Was it Purina? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Maybe, it yeah, of course it was. Thank you to Purina for sponsoring this video. He showed me being in what looks to me as a mode of transportation. Cause I asked him like, what was your favorite adventure ever? You're sitting in a seat, he's sitting on the floor. There's other people there. Is it a bus? Is it an airplane? Has he been on an airplane? He's been on an airplane. It's an airplane. Yeah, he went down with us to Mexico cause we were there for like a month. He was a little beach dog. He got to hang out on the beach. He loved that. He felt yeah, like he was he showed his me best the beach. life. Oh, that's the next thing I wrote down, beach. He showed me the beach and he showed me fresh ocean air. I would take him in the morning, set up a blanket, I would do yoga on the beach. He would sit with me and watch. Oh, he showed me um, being kissed and fussed over in bed specifically. Do you have like a bedtime ritual with him? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and he says he likes being tucked into bed like a baby, like that ritual, that like attention. I that do he gets. tuck into a bed like a baby. Yeah. My partner, Matt, does not like that I do that. Oh, but you gotta keep doing it because he loves it. You hear that, Matt? <laughs> I'm sure you encounter a lot of people who are like, no way this is real. The key to animal communication is to learn to trust it. It's been an amazing journey to really own who I am and to start doing it for clients all over the world. The gift within the journey was to really embrace myself and trust myself and stand in my own certainty, which I don't think enough of us do. He misses nursing suckling. He misses being a baby. Yeah. You know, all I know is he came from like this hoarding house situation. So he was with a lot of other cats. And we've always joked that when we adopted him, he was very, very chill and relaxed as if he always wanted some goddamn peace and quiet. I took the liberty of asking him what his life looked like before you got him. He showed me a litter of kittens and his mom, but they're like scraggly and thin and flea bitten and it's not a healthy litter. Mm -hmm. And he showed me being bottle fed. Whoa. Yeah. He tells me that he's very good on leash. <laughs> oh, does he now? Yes. Oh, he tells you that. Interesting. Is because I would say that he needs to learn to get into a follow. Oh, is he not good on leash? He is not. He's okay. He he's says better. he is. Well, he's got, I've got some news for you, Buster. <laughs> he wants um, to continue with kisses on his head. <laughs> Yeah! My number one fear coming in today is that I was gonna be told by Bo, no more kisses. And guess what, Maggie? Bobo wants all the kisses. I'm gonna kiss that little snoot, I'm gonna kiss that little head, smooches for days. Okay, this was a little bit sad and funny at the same time. He says he likes to bark and protect, but he's not taken seriously, but he means it. That, that, that checks out. Yeah. Yeah. He says he loves taking pictures. Oh, that's good to know, because he's great at pictures. He we take so loves it. He is half of my camera roll. So then I said, well, what do you want to tell dad? What do you want to say? And he literally said three times, pay attention to me, pay attention to me, pay attention to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's Kimbop. Yeah. He says that he's happiest when you're home. You plural, so both of you. Mm -hmm. When you're home, he's the happiest. I said, what else do you want and need? He said that he wants his neck scratched. He says, pet me longer at night. And then I said, well, any last words? He said, I'm happy and I hope this never changes. Aw, he's such a sweet sugar boy. A lot of animals give advice for their people. So, I mean, I talk to a lot of really wise animals and I know nothing about these people, right? I'm given a picture, the name of the animal, their gender, their age, who they live with, that's it. I had this one dog who was going on and on and on about how the woman cannot leave the man, that he does dumb things, but he doesn't mean it, and he really loves her, and he was going on and on and on about how they have to stay married. And the woman, when I talked to her, like burst into tears and was like, yeah, I was thinking of leaving him. 
And I was like, your dog says that you gotta try harder. I kind of expected this was gonna be the dog being like, I want more belly rubs. Now it turns out my dog may be like, Zach's a piece of shit. And she no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any questions you wanted to ask him? Oh, I have a list. Okay. <laughs> I wrote some down, cause okay. I was panicking. Whenever someone comes to the door, Bowie freaks. He doesn't bark, he screams. <laughs> he, his hind legs are behind him and he goes, <gasps> If I don't let him say hi, he's just like, Frickin', he's so pent up. So I wish that I could talk, like get through his little brain and just be like, hey buddy, thank you so much, appreciate it. Shut the f up. And I guess I wanna know how sad he is when we're gone. Uh, and we got him Grandpa Barry to have a friend when we were gone, but did he want that? Our pets are here. You have asked to not meet them yet. There's intuition and there's my brain, and they're not the same thing. The minute I get involved with my brain, it's game over. This has nothing to do with my brain, and I have to receive the images that the animal's giving me. So when I'm in front of an animal, my brain's gonna have all kinds of things to say, and I'd rather just, you know, be quiet, let me talk to the animal intuitively, and then meet them. I'm a little nervous. Yeah, I'm, me too. What if I'm doing something wrong? What if Becky's terrible to... <laughs> uh. So I went back in there and asked if I could speak to him one more time because you had some questions. Yeah. He immediately like started sniffing me again and like welcomed me in the, kind of this similar manner as before. I said, you know, your dad's telling me that there's a lot of barking when someone's at the door and that your dad wants you to know that he's got it. And he goes, no, no, no. I want dad to know that I got it. <laughs> no! I know he wants me to know. He's like, no, I got it. I know he's got it. He don't got it though. He don't got it. He, according to him, he's got it. Well, how do we make him not get it? <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> I asked him how he felt when the kitten came in. He's very kind of big brotherly. He's mm -hmm. very patient. He's very uncat like You know, mm -hmm. he's trying to be a big brother. He's trying to understand. I asked him how he felt when you were out of town. And he said, I'm easy. I don't want to be a bother. I don't want to be demanding. I don't want to make trouble. He's like, it's fine. He's terrified of children. There's going to be children in his life. He's saying they're unpredictable. Sure. They're loud. <laughs> he said they're ear piercing. So I said to him, you know, your dad's saying that there might be kids in your future, in your home. He was like, oh my God. He's very uh, unhappy about that. <laughs> I meant more like, yeah, like there's gonna be friends with kids. Yeah, That's but good. At some, at some point we may have kids. He doesn't like that. Well, we're gonna have to talk about that, Mr. Posif. And so then the last question you asked me to ask him was, is there anything he doesn't like, right? Uh -huh. He said, kids. <laughs> Does he remember anything about uh, the family that abandoned him? He's showing me, um, you know, puppy with his mom and siblings. Mm -hmm. And then he goes to, and he gets, you know, gets bought or whatever, goes to a family. He's very, very loved and treasured in the beginning. And he was bought for um, a child. And then that person left. I don't know what happened to them, but they just disappeared out of the picture. And so now the family's taking care of him and he's acting out, they're frustrated. He's kind of a pain in the butt. They That's started getting more and more and more frustrated. And yeah. finally they're like this, Let's mm. get him out of here. And so then I took the liberty of asking him, so in contrast, what is it like uh, with your dad's? Like, and he says that you spoil him and that you let him be him. And he's grateful for that. That's why we need more gay dads. <laughs> in the last month and a half, he started begging for food at the dinner table and trying to get on the table to eat the food with us. This is what he said. He said that your food smells so good, he literally can't resist. Like the smell of it is driving him insane. Wow and he needs it. Okay, all right. <laughs> What's his general vibe with his two, his brother and sister? He resents them. Oh, He drama. said, pay attention to me. Yes. <laughs> to make matters worse, he thinks they're dumb. Kimberly. He's like, they're simpletons. Kimberly Bach. <laughs> you know? I could kind of see that because he is the most like proactive about everything. It's fine because I think the other two hate him too. I think they all just hate each other. Yeah. But it's fine because so. that's kind of like how me and my siblings are. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm creating this household dynamic. And I said, would you have anything else to say? And he says, I want for nothing. Chill big boy, that's our Alfred. Should I go get him? Yeah, I'd Should love I to meet him. Bring the big boy. He's gonna be so big. He's gonna blend in with his couch. Let's go. Bowie, hi. Oh my God, he's so, he's smaller than I thought. Yeah, he photographs big. Oh, come here, Bowie. Come here. 
Bowie, I want to say you are a very good boy on leash, and I should have never doubted you. Kimberly, Bob. Kimba, come here. Come here. Come here. Oh, <laughs> look at you. There we go. Uh, Say hi. Stay. Stay. Go. Good boy. <laughs> yeah. He's purring. Yeah, he's like, I smell the food. Do you want this? Bowie, thank you for communicating with us today. You did a very good job. Here's a little treato. Is that the crunchy one you like? She said you're a little diva, and I agree. Well, this was fun. We found out that Alfred grew up with lots of cats, Bowie's a good boy, and that I, Kimbop, am the number one diva. Thank you so much to Purina for letting people hear my true voice. Goodbye, everyone. Time for more treats.